Okay, we have written another integral. We have the integral from zero to pi over two of sine squared x over sine x plus cosine x dx. Okay, the thing I thought was interesting here was like how similar this is to our normal setup for King's principle. So one example of this would be this setup here where all the exponents are the same. They're all some value and doesn't really matter what it is. And when you have this, you can go right to the solution, just divide by this upper bound pi over two and you get pi over four. So of course I'm not showing the steps, but when you encounter something like this, you just divide that in half and you get pi over four. So what we have here in our problem is really similar to the case when n equals one. And then in the case of this integral, you could just use normal methods and it's not too bad, but it's still not gonna be as fast as the one second solution and just putting down the answer pi over four. But the trouble we have in this problem is we don't actually have the exponent all the same. We have the one here on the sine and the cosine, but in the numerator we have sine squared. And in this case, of course, there's a few different ways to do it. You could do some trig identities or a half angle substitution. But what I was wondering on this one is, can we still use King's principle on this, even though we don't have the same exponent everywhere? Okay, so we have our King's principle down here to the right. And what we're going to do is, for our a and b value, like our a value is going to be 0, our b value is going to be pi over 2. So our f of x is all this thing. So what we're going to do is to transform this, first our bounds are going to stay the same. So we're still going from 0 to pi over 2. Then we need this f of b plus a minus x value. All we need to do is add the bounds. Adding a and b, we get pi over 2. And then we're going to have minus x. So substituting this in everywhere, first in the numerator, we're going to have sine. Let's write it like this, pi over 2 minus x uh, squared. And then, in the numer and then in the denominator, we're going to have sine pi over 2 minus x plus cosine pi over 2 minus x. But now over here to the right, I have our complementary angle formula for sine and cosine. And what we're going to do is we'll use this to simplify everything, right? Because it's kind of a mess with the angles right now. And so we have our value for this. We have our value for this. This here is the same as this. So going ahead with this using the formula, the numerator is just going to become cosine squared of x using this one. And then in the denominator, this is going to become cosine x plus sine x dx. And now at this point, this is when the King's principle really pays off because you notice we've got the same bounds as we have in our original problem, which I'll label as I, but we also have the same denominator, the order change, but it's still the same thing. So it's gonna make it nice to add these two together because this here is also I. So what I'll do now is just add these two integrals together and I'll bring them together into one integral and with the same denominator, we already have a common denominator. So what's gonna happen is we'll write this zero pi over two same denominator, sine x plus cos x, add the numerators together so we end up with sine squared x plus cosine squared x. But then the thing we notice here, sine squared plus cosine squared x, that's just one. I can divide by two on both sides here in order to isolate what we want to find. Divide by two here or multiply by one half. And then what do we notice here? Well, the King's principle didn't work as well as it did when we have all the same exponent. Because in that case, when we have all the same exponent, what happens is the whole integral just reduces down to one. Here, we still have more work to do. So anyway, it's probably a longer method, but let's just go ahead now and try to solve this thing. Okay, now for this one here, there's probably still quite a few different ways to do it. But what I like to do is just kind of create a coefficient in front of the sine and cosine like this with one. Doing that, what I can do is just use the fact that we know that sine pi over four is gonna be one over square root of two and cosine pi over 4 is also 1 over square root of 2. So if I just multiply square root of 2 on both sides here and here, doing the same thing on the cosine, then what we have, this becomes a 1, this becomes a 1, matching our coefficients here. So what I can do for each of these 1s is write it in this form here, but because we have square root of 2 in both these, what I'll do is I'll factor that out front. So we already have 1 half. I'll factor out like a 1 over square root of 2 here. Then let's rewrite this using this form here. So we're gonna have dx, I'll write this as, there's a, there's a few different ways to do this by the way, but I'm just gonna choose this way, sine pi over four times sine x plus cosine pi over four cosine x. And now the reason I do this is just noticing that this right here, this is gonna be our different angle formula for cosine. I can also write this as just cosine of x minus pi over four. So when I rewrite again, what I can do here is because we have cosine in the denominator, what I'll do is I'll bring that into numerator, write that as secant. So we're gonna end up with secant of x minus pi over four dx. 
And then you could try a use substitution here, but you don't really need it because the derivative of this is just gonna be dx. So what I can do in this is just use the formula. Integral of secant is gonna be just natural log, absolute value of secant x minus pi over four plus tangent of x minus pi over four. But now that we have this, we can just go ahead and evaluate from zero to pi over two and finish it off. Okay, now we'll go ahead and evaluate. We'll just, we'll bring this one over two square root of two in front. First, what happens when we look at pi over two, we're gonna have natural log secant pi over two minus pi over four. So we're looking at secant of pi over four. Well, cosine of pi over four is one over square root of two. So flip it and we get the reciprocal, which is just square root of two. Then plus tan, again, this is gonna be pi over four. Tan of pi over four is just one. So of course, this is always positive. I don't need absolute value here. Now for the next part, we're gonna have minus natural log zero minus pi over four, that's gonna be secant of minus pi over four. Secant is an even function, so actually it's gonna be the same thing as pi over four, the same thing we had here, so that's just gonna be square root of two again. Then plugging zero in here, tan of minus pi over four, tan's actually an odd function, so that's gonna be minus tan pi over four, so that's actually gonna be a minus one right there. So from here, let's see if I can get some simplification just using log properties, because we're subtracting, I can write this as a fraction, square root of two plus one, over square root of two minus one. And then inside here, let's multiply, let's get the conjugate of this. So we'll multiply by square root of two plus one on both these. The nice thing about this is when you distribute this out, you just get two minus one or one. So the whole denominator cancels. So what I can do with this, because we have square root of two plus one times square root of two plus one, when I rewrite it, I'll write it as square root of two plus one squared here. And then we have this other stuff but then I can take a one half here, bring it into the exponent as a one half to cancel with this exponent here too. And so for my final solution to this, we just get natural log square root of two plus one over square root of two, and that's it. Okay, so in conclusion, we definitely can do it by King's principle. It's not terrible, but I think it does make it longer. And I think maybe even this different angle might've made it longer, I don't know. So I think we probably extended it a little bit, but definitely found out that we can do it. <laughs> So that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.